Hi friends, have you ever wondered how astronomers measure the distance to planets and stars that are billions of kilometers away? Today I am going to show you just using a pencil. So go and get a pencil like this and let's try this together. Hold the pencil in front of your face with one eye closed. Now without moving the pencil, open your other eye and close the first one. Can you see the shift in the pencil position? This is due to parallax. You are viewing the same object from different angles like this. So the pencil appears to shift. If you consider the pencil and your two eyes, can you see it's going to form a triangle like this. Let's say the distance between your two eyes is 6 centimeters and you measure the angle formed by the pencil at each of your eyes and it turns out to be 75 degrees as shown in the triangle here. Since the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180 degrees, so the angle at the vertex of the triangle is going to be 30 degrees. Now you can use some trigonometry and calculate the distance of the pencil from you. You might be thinking why should we use such a complicated way for measuring the distance of a pencil when you could have simply used a measuring tape or a ruler. Here you can use a measuring tape or a ruler but you can't do that for measuring large distances like the distance of planets and stars. There you need to use this indirect method of measuring distance and it's called the parallax method. Let's look at how we can calculate the distance of planets and stars using this parallax method. Just like the pencil case for the planets or the stars, we'll observe them from two different places on the earth. So let's say we are observing a star and we'll measure the angle of the star from two places on the earth. The angles are measured using an instrument called a sextant. Once again, a triangle is formed like this. The distance between the two places on the earth AB in the triangle is called the basis. It's like the distance between our eyes and is denoted by the letter B. Now we can calculate the angle ASB at the vertex of the triangle here. This angle is denoted by theta and is called the parallax angle or the parallactic angle. This angle should be measured in radians. So if you measure it in degrees, do remember to convert it into radians using this conversion. 360 degrees is 2 pi radians or you can remember 180 degrees is pi radians. So use this conversion and convert your angle from degrees to radians. Remember how angle is measured in radians? The angle theta in radian is the arc length divided by the radius of the circle. So if you consider the star S to be center of the circle, angle theta in radians is going to be the arc length of AB divided by the radius AS, which we'll denote by capital D. Now, since the star is really far away, the angle theta will be very small. So we can say that approximately the arc length AB will equal to side AB of the triangle. They'll be approximately the same here. So we can say angle theta in radians is B divided by D. So rearranging the equation, the distance of the star D is B divided by the angle theta in radians. Let's apply this formula to calculate the distance of the moon from the earth. Let's say the moon is observed from two diametrically opposite points A and B on the earth. The angle theta subtended at the moon by the two directions is 2 degrees. Now given that the diameter of the earth is about 1.28 multiplied by 10 to the power 4 kilometers. So here we can put theta is 2 degrees that you need to convert into radians. 2 degrees is pi by 180 times 2 radians, which is approximately 0.035 radians. The basis is going to be the diameter of the earth, which is B is 1.28 times 10 to the power 4 kilometers. So use the formula capital D is B by theta to calculate the distance of the moon. So when you substitute the values, you will find that the distance of the moon is 3.66 times 10 to the power 5 kilometers. A similar method can
can also be used to measure the diameters of the planet or the sun. Let's say you're standing at a particular place on the earth and you observe the two ends of the sun, which is the diameter of the sun. Again, a triangle will be formed like this, where you are at C and AB is the sun of diameter D. Alpha is the angle subtended by the sun at C on the earth. The angular size of the sun is alpha. Let's say we know the distance of the sun D from the earth. So we can use the same formula angle alpha in radians is diameter D divided by the distance of the sun which is denoted by capital D. So rearranging the diameter of the sun denoted by small d is capital D times alpha. Let's say the sun's angular diameter is measured to be 1920 seconds. Now the distance of the sun from the earth is 1.5 times 10 to the power 11 meters. So what will be the diameter of the sun? Remember the sun's angular diameter alpha is 1920 seconds, which you can convert into radians. Since one second is 4.85 times 10 to the power minus six radians, we can convert this to radians by multiplying with this number. So the sun's angular diameter is gonna be 9.31 times 10 to the power minus three radians. So the sun's diameter is going to be capital D times alpha, which is 1.3965 times 10 to the power 9 meters. Or we can say it is approximately 1.4 times 10 to the power 9 meters. So see, we measured it using this technique. The parallax method is a powerful tool for measuring the distances of nearby stars and planets. But it has some limitations. The parallax method is only applicable to the stars that are relatively close to the earth. Beyond a certain distance, the parallax angle becomes too small to measure accurately, even with the most precise instruments available. Also, small errors in the measurement of the parallax angle can lead to significant errors in the calculated distance. Despite these limitations, the parallax method remains a valuable tool for measuring the distances of nearby stars and planets and it has been used extensively by astronomers for over a century. So next time you pick up a pencil, remember that it's not just a writing tool, it's a window to the universe. And don't forget to like our video and share it with your friends and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.